Happy Saturday. Tim from AlphaWolfTrading.com coming at you with uh, next week's stocks to watch for trading and investing. I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. Um, let's take a look at the economic calendar for next week. We have a lot of Fed speak. We've got a lot of different members from the Fed talking next week. That could be interesting. Um, we've got uh, Small Business Optimism Index. We've got the JOLTS report. That's the Job, job Openings Report. Uh, MBA mortgage applications, um, the petroleum status report, jobless claims, PPI, FD, and then, uh, like I said, a couple more Fed speakers. So that could be interesting. Consumer price index on Friday, uh, Baker Hughes rate count, and of course, petroleum status report, which we get every week. So not a whole lot of uh, big time economic, ec economic data points that uh, could impact the markets, but Fed speak could be interesting, so we'll see how that all plays out next week. And then we've also got uh, a pr another week of decent earnings uh, coming out. And if you haven't seen my videos before, uh, the stocks that are in green are actually stocks that I could be looking to take some kind of a trade in off of their earnings reports. And then the ones that have the black boxes around them. I'm really interested to see what those earnings look like. Not necessarily take a trade within that stock, maybe looking at a sympathy trade, maybe just wanting to see how it might impact the sector. So uh, a lot of retail coming up next week, right? Macy's, Kohl's, uh, JCPenney, uh, you know, Nordstrom's, right? We've got some, some big retail coming out. We've got a couple of um, rental car companies, Hertz and Avis, that are going to be reporting. Uh, Twilio is one that I'm kind of interested in. Recent IPO. Um, so several stocks out there that are interesting. U.S. Concrete has a pretty interesting looking chart. Now all these are not on my stocks to watch this week. I've got a list. Uh, you know, I've been trying to shorten these videos down a bit for all of you out there so that it doesn't consume so much of your time and actually I've got a pretty long list this this week because I have one of one of the members that sent in a list of stocks they have on their radar I thought I'd show you what we're all about over at Alpha Wolf Trading and you know the intent of Alpha Wolf is to help the members become more consistent more profitable and to do that I think you have to have a plan for each and every trade so one of the members likes to send me their trade plans and we take a look at it and uh, give our recommendations. But um, some pretty good, you know, a good variety of stocks that are reporting next week. Looking forward to GW Pharma. You know, Caro reported last week or uh, Friday had a nice little pop or Thursday, I, mean, I think it was. Had a nice pop on Friday. Could get some follow through. ZYNE also got a little bit of a bounce. GW. Uh, Got a little bit of a bounce off of Fast Money Mention. So we'll see if that gets any follow through off of what they have to report in earnings. Uh, Amicus, which is Fold, that actually is on my list. Live Nation, I think it's got a great looking chart. Um, so that's where I am on BDSI. Actually is pretty pretty nice looking buyout delivery. Uh, I don't think I have that on the list, but uh, those are some of the stocks that I am definitely keeping an eye on for next week. All right, so that uh, gets past the stocks or the earnings. Let's take a look at what I've got on my list this week for stocks to watch. Now, Sirius actually isn't on my list um, this week, but it is a stock that I am keeping close eye on. Sirius uh, just reported earnings and popped out over 550, which was a big area of resistance for it. Uh, the earnings were great, you know, but there are some concerns about the auto sector, new car sales, right? Uh, Ford and, and uh, GM and, uh, you know, the, there is some concerns within that space. And then uh, Pandora reported and they kind of gave mixed results. But what I'm looking for here is actually a pullback. This is more of a swing or a long term hold position. Um, I'm looking for this pullback to 550. What was resistance? Looking for that to act as support, and it could be a good entry pull or a good entry starter for a long-term hold. If we lose that 550, we could very easily come down and test the 50-day, 
or maybe even come all the way down and test the five dollar holla as support but i do like sirius quite a bit even though it's not really on my list this week so let's take a look at cstm uh, so one of the things that i will talk about uh, normally i do a sector wrap for uh, market wrap for the pro members and we talk about the different sectors and spaces and what happened throughout the week and I do that every day after the close actually and there are some sectors out there that I really uh, think are, are kind of interesting you know last week I was a little more cautious this week I'm a little more bullish and the reason for that is because we pulled back to some areas of, of support for potential bounce in quite a few sectors, right? Uh, the IBB uh, is an interesting spot for a potential bounce. Uh, the IWM, I'm still a little, little, little uh, cautious on that one. We'll see how it plays out this week, but a little bit cautious there. Uh, financials look kind of interesting. Uh, transportation looking like it could be an area for bounce. Another one of the pro members actually brought up to me last week coal sector and I did as I was going through my scans notice that there were several uh, coal names that were kind of getting a little bit of a bounce and that was interesting so that could be a sector to keep an eye on uh, energy um, I happen to like that sector I you know I think it's due for a bounce and started to see some some bounce in some names out there another one is materials right so CSTM had a very nice pop now this is the second day of the of the move right it had a two-day move already and broke out of an area of price resistance flirting with the ten dollar holla um, could see a consolidation build out a little flag here may see a red to green and continuation move now this is not a, a big thick stock it's only got 92 million shares in the float so could have a day trading opportunity here could also be a swing opportunity after we see some type of a intraday setup right or a, a, a couple of days setup maybe we build out the flag maybe we pull back into that nine dollar area what was resistance now becomes support right so let's we'll see if how this plays out but CSTM I think is worth keeping an eye on rail had a fantastic move and I didn't see, I've been watching this consolidation for a while uh, only 12 million shares in the float this is a small float uh, broke down through uh, out of this consolidation to the downside had a nice reversal candle and, and and that really would have been fantastic opportunity to pick this up it bounced right off the 200 day moving average but it's still you know it's not overbought uh, it's had a big move though so what I'm looking at is the area that it broke above looking for that to maybe act as support on a pullback uh, to around 1780 or so uh, could get a red to green move and just get some continuation follow through pretty decent volume last couple of days so looking at this one either for some kind of a, uh, consolidation and pull back to 1788 that could be a spot to take it for a swing or maybe a red to green move for a day trade if we continue to get decent volume so nice move in rail <clears throat> all right BLDR the these guys must have reported already uh, and I'm, I'm not sure if this was off of earnings that uh, made this pop that's also one thing you need to check with these stocks make sure that they don't have earnings coming up or they if they do have earnings coming up know what day that is so you can make a determination as to whether or not you want to hold any shares into that event um, but this uh, BLDR very nice breakout over an area of price resistance on decent volume on Friday you know not overbought um, potential red to green continuation type move on BLDR fairly small float 96.8 million shares in the float 9% short interest uh, good looking setup here let's take a look at the weekly time frame it's a big spot that it's trying to break through right it's a pretty big spot uh, and it's not its all-time highs right so if you look at the next area potential resistance you're looking somewhere around twenty dollars or so on the week or on the monthly time frame right so uh, pretty good look here on this uh, BLDR so potential day trade maybe a swing depending on your comfort level 
ARRY is another one that I have been watching and I was looking at for it to come down and test $7 actually uh, and see if it would bounce off of the $7 holla. It actually already had a nice little bounce. Now this has earnings on the 20s, uh, no, uh, the 9th. So it has earnings next week. So it's getting a little pop heading into earnings right into the 50 day moving average might get some continuation of this move right maybe you get a red to green it's flirting with the eight dollar holla you could look to maybe take a day trade into heading into earnings um you know and then and then see what the stock does after earnings but uh pretty nice little pop on friday with some decent volume 2.6 million shares 20 percent short interest only 107 million shares in the float so Worth keeping an eye on that one, either for a day trading opportunity, heading into earnings, or maybe uh, a play after earnings uh, if they report something something positive, right? Uh, XGTI. So this is uh, ha this had a nice big run. It's actually been consolidating. It got out of the upper Bollinger Band, consolidating, pulling back into the Bollinger Band, uh, sitting right on top of the 200-day and the 20-day simple moving average, right? Um, they do not re they report on the 17th now got a little bit of a pop on friday over this trend line maybe it gets some follow through maybe you see some kind of a move heading into earnings this space communication equipment not exactly smoking hot right now right uh oclr uh, aaoi uh you know aaoi got absolutely smashed on uh friday right with their guidance and um, so it's kind of an interesting stock to keep an eye on for a day trading opportunity. 11.1 million shares in the float, 12, almost 13% short interest. Uh, stochastics just starting to curl up. And like I said, sitting right on top of the 200 day and the 20 SMA. Uh, if it gets some real volume, you know, maybe we, we can see another test up into uh, the 260, 270 area maybe even go up and get a three test so potential day trading opportunity there omer uh they have earnings i believe this week and i'm just going to confirm that right they have earnings on tuesday after the close but a pretty interesting look on this one as well right had a nice big run pulled back to the 50 day a little bit of a pop and then pull back right back to the 50 day again stochastics curling to the upside may have to wait on this one till after earnings but you know does look as though it's trying to take out that trend line now it failed to do so on friday it popped above it pulled back but maybe this gets a a little bit of a follow-through into tuesday um after the you know after the close right so maybe it i, I would be out of this uh, because of the fact that it is a biotech it's only got 36 million shares in the float 25 percent short interest potential day trade heading into earnings but i would not hold it through earnings um unless it's just a lotto <clears throat> so you know another one I, I didn't put on my list here but uh i'm gonna go ahead and bring it up just because vr vrx reports on uh, tuesday before the close or before the open, I'm sorry. And uh, pull back to the 50-day. Just had the golden cross on the VRX. Uh, just had the 20-day cross above, or the 50-day cross above the 100, uh, or 200-day. And, um, you know, it, I think this is getting pretty interesting, actually, because it, it was consolidating after a nice big run. It's pulling back. Um, this one could be interesting. It's oversold. So if they report, you know, better than expected earnings, you could see a good move in VRX. Now that's a thicker stock, 327 million shares in the float and almost 10% interest. I, but I do think this one is definitely worth keeping an eye on for, um, for next week. All right, let's keep rolling here. CGI trucking company, uh, had a nice pop, nice run. It's been consolidating. It's coming up into a long-term trend line. It's below the 200 day. Uh, new uh, CEO there, turnaround specialist that, that came in in July. They do not report until the 31st. So 
Um, you know, on a trend line break, on a break over five bucks, I think this could be an interesting trade for a day trading opportunity. 20 million shares in the float, 30% short interest. Uh, you know, maybe even a pullback to say 450. Look for that as an entry, right? And then put your stop just below, um, just below four bucks. You know, I think maybe we could go up and test that 200 day moving average right around 580 or so. Um, but not a bad looking setup on, on the daily time frame. So worth keeping an eye on CGI for a potential day trade. SOI, recent um, IPO. And I did say one of the sectors that I thought was kind of interesting is, is uh, oil and gas. Actually, I added to one of my oil and gas positions on Friday, WTI. They reported and their earnings looked a little bit better. But this SOI had uh, had a nice little pop on Friday. Stochastics curling up. Only got 10 million shares in the float and 17% short interest now they report on the 14th um you know maybe a red to green you know opportunity i mean it, it traded pretty decent volume on friday um you know take a look at the hourly uh time frame one of the, one of the, one of my uh, pro members actually turned me on to that uh, hourly time frame with recent ipos and it's really helped quite a bit actually but this has already had a pretty nice pop, right? So look to see if it gets any kind of follow through. Maybe a red to green move, pull back to $13 and look for it to go take touch 14, right? Uh, that could be an interesting interesting opportunity. And let's just, since I brought it up, I'll bring up the chart of WTI. You know, it reclaimed the, the uh, 50 day moving average. There has been uh, insider buying within this price range. Uh, the CEO bought uh, 1.2 million shares between a uh, buck 59 and a buck 94. Uh, that's a pretty significant step up to the plate. Earnings were pretty good on these guys. The cast is just curled up. Uh, a buck 90, buck 89 has kind of been acting as support. So um, looking for WTI maybe to get some follow through. And that one is a swing. Actually, it's a, it's in my longer term hold portfolio. I've been building a position in this price range for a while and uh, almost have it built out completely. We'll see if this gets any follow through next week. All right, um, ADMP, you know, I had the big news of the generic EpiPen, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, I don't think they got very good um, news recently from that generic EpiPen. I think it might have been excluded from something. I can't remember what it was I read, but anyway, this has got a fairly decent look, and they do report on the 14th, so uh, about you know a couple weeks away here, but um, or a week away, and uh, it's got a pretty decent look. Now it broke below the 50-day; it held around here at the 100 EMA. Uh, looking for a trend line break, I would be looking just for really a trading opportunity in the name. Uh, wouldn't want to hold it into earnings, but uh, potentially looking for a trend line break in ADMP. INSG, first full disclosure, I just took a little starter in this. Uh, this is another communication equipment name. And pulled down uh, to an area of potential support is what I'm looking at on this one. Just above the $1 holla. Uh, this was the old, uh, was it Novotel? And new CEO here. Uh, they have earnings on Monday, and now you know I, I took a little st I took a small starter, not a big start you know not a big position it was oversold stochastic starting to curl up, you know if they report a decent number could get a nice little pop out of this one, uh, could present a day trading opportunity as well, 43 million shares in the float, 13% short interest, you know so we'll see how earnings come out but this has got a pretty pretty interesting look as an area for potential bounce you know small floater we'll see how it plays out what it, what I kind of like about it is it broke over this trend line here and uh, you know it pulled back to an area of support we'll see if that holds but the uh, potential day trade opportunity there VSLR reports on the 8th so there are a couple of, of 
solar names that report this week b s l r r b and one of them i happen to like the look of this one it's really sitting right on the fifty day moving average had a nice big run and then consolidated right so if they report better than expected earnings it is oversold could see a nice little bounce trend line break here maybe go back up and test the six dollar holla worth keeping an eye on that one a c a d now i saw this one and i think acad may have earnings this week they do they have them on tuesday after the close and Peter actually brought this one up. Um, this is one of the pro members, and this is his trade plan. I saw this as a potential flat top breakout um, and testing the 200-day moving average. He's looking for a potential day trading opportunity in this one. Entry of $30, stop $29.50. He's looking to risk $0.50. Cents. First target, $30.70. Second target, $31.50. The risk reward is only 1.4 to 1. We'd like to see 2 to 1, but that's you know for a day trade what the heck you know give it a shot uh, earnings are on Tuesday I like Friday's close above the 200 day it barely did close above the 200 day uh, the entry is 50% retrace red to green off of Friday's candle stop is below the low first target is back up to the 200 EMA second target is gap fill from May no recent insider activity so did his homework on this, put together a nice plan, I like it. For a day trade only, I also would not want to hold that one into earnings. A-Ray, another one that I've been watching for a while, had a little two-day pop. Now they report on the 22nd. A-Ray, it's flirting with the 50-day the, uh, moving average, right? Looking for to take that out, take out that trend line potentially go back up and test somewhere in the 480 490 maybe get a five roll test the 200 day moving average if you can take the 200 day out but you know probably wouldn't happen until after earnings right uh 80 million shares of float seven and a half percent short interest just looking for a day trading opportunity there maybe on a trend line break and a break above the 50 day moving average we'll see if that happens next week peers they report on wednesday after the close Another one sitting right on top of the 50-day moving average. Now, you know, I mentioned IBB. I think IBB is an interesting area for potential bounce as well. So if you get the IBB to bounce, and then you could get, you know, these names to potentially uh, move in sympathy with it, right? So uh, I like peers. We'll see what they report on, on um, Wednesday after the close. You could get a trend line break and maybe a six test heading into earnings. I wouldn't hold it through earnings, right? I, I would wait until after earnings and see if there is a trading opportunity after earnings. IONS, this is one another one sent in by Peter. We'll take a quick look at his trade plan here. 51.50 entry, stop 50.55, first target 53.20. Risk reward 1.8 to 1. Like that is remounted the close above 50 EMA on Friday. Stop would be below the low of the first of Friday's candle. First target would be 20 moving average. Second target would be the top of what tends to be left shoulder back in June. This is it would be the day trade because earnings coming up on Tuesday. CEO selling in July around 52, but I don't think it's a major part of this position. So <clears throat> he's done his homework on this one. It is sitting on the 50 day. You do have stochastics curling. I think this will also be tied to the IBB. I think for a day trading opportunity, there's potential there. 104 million shares of float, 12% short interest. Um, it's worth it's, it, it's worth keeping an eye on. Probably not one of my favorite looks. You know, the way I look at it um, for this one. I probably would want to get it as close to $50 of, you know, $50 and 50 cents or so as an entry. But, um, it's a, it's a decent trade plan. So worth keeping an eye on ATRS. Um, let's see ATRS. When do they have earnings? They have earnings on the eighth. Another one that's sitting right on top of the 50 day moving average. All the moving averages sloping up. Right, you got a nice upward trend. Um, 
got a price target of five dollars. A CEO just picked up a hundred or CFO just picked up 130,000 shares at two dollars and seventy nine cents. So there's a lot that I like about this particular chart. May have to wait until after earnings. Um, could get a pop. Let's see on the eighth. So they report uh, after the close on the eighth. So it could get a pop on Monday heading into earnings. I just wouldn't hold it into earnings. Uh, NRG, beautiful looking. I, I mean, it had a big pop. It's consolidating. Uh, this is another one sent in. 2340 entry. Stop 2299. Uh, first target 2540. This has been coiling for a while. Big pop. Looking for an entry close to the 20 day moving average. Stops below the 20. It's just below the 20 MA. First target is top of the recent coil. Second target is fib retracement. No recent insider activity. Earnings already happened. So actually, NRG does have a pretty good look. It did work off that overbought condition. Stochastic curling up. I think, yeah, it's worth keeping an eye on. Nice, nice trade plan. HLX, I actually like this one. Uh, one of the oil names out there that I do like. And uh, Peter sent this one in. 615 entry, stop 5, 589. First target 670, second target 730. Risk reward 2 to 1, or 2.1 to 1. Uh, I like the look of this one quite a bit, right? So uh, it's back over the 50 day moving average. It's, it's consolidating right here at the 100 EMA. Um, it, six appears to be acting as support. I guess if, if for this one, um, you know, I'd like to get it as close to six bucks as I could. If I could get it down an entry, well, I mean, six fifteen is fine. Six ten, six fifteen, uh, I think could be a good entry on Helix. I do like the space. See if it gets uh, a little breakout here, but uh, pretty good look on H HLX. Uh, SRPT. This is one that uh, Peter actually already took a position in on Friday. Um, Entry was 38. It's currently sitting at 38.52. Had a big pop off of some press. Is pulled back. Uh, okay, so this is it was an earnings breakout. Insider purchased 47,000 shares July 27th at 42.50. So buying it below, um, buying it below where the insider took a position. Got nearly nearly have a gap fill. Uh, I like the whole trade, right? Pulled back to an area of price support, and that's where he got involved. I, I like I like this quite a bit. Look for maybe a little trend line break and a retest, but pretty good looking setup there on uh, SRPT, especially if the IVB bounces, right? Then then likely you get SRPT that will follow in sympathy. Right? If, the, if the IBB breaks down, it's going to be difficult for a lot of these uh, biotech names. But this one is looking pretty good. Uh, Fold, I mentioned that one, is reporting Monday before the open. Now, this does have a gap to fill. Um, it's been in consolidation mode for a while after this gap. Candles are pretty tight. Looks like it's waiting on some news, right? So maybe... Uh, Monday, it gives us that news and, and either breaks us up or fills the gap. One of the two. But uh, I think worth keeping an eye on that one. 104 million shares of float, 33% short interest. Wuba. Wuba has been consolidating. Uh, good looking chart. Good looking chart. And this was sent in by Peter. Uh, Entry fifty dollars, stop forty nine fifty. Risk or first target fifty one sixty, second target fifty three. Coiling nicely, probably waiting on earnings. Now they happen on August sixteenth. Now this may not move until the sixteenth. I would look for entry twenty day moving average stop below there. First target is the top of the recent range. Second target is a fib projection. Can't find any insider activity. So. Uh, you know, look, it might just continue to consolidate a bit heading into earnings, but um, and then again, it could it could it could get a little bit of action heading into those earnings. We'll see. But it's at an interesting spot of potential resistance. Right. So we'll see what happens with Wuba. It does have a good look. I probably 
you know, would look to, uh, I probably would wait until after earnings on this one, but like I said, it could get a pop heading into earnings. Just make sure that you're not holding it through earnings. Uh, Facebook. So this is another Peter pick. And entry is 168.60, stop 167, first target 172, second target 175, risk reward 2 to 1 to 1, or 2.1 to 1. Nice flag after earnings, stochastic starting to look like they want to curl. Entry would be on red to, re, red to green, close to the EMA, close to the EMA, 8 EMA. Stop would be below 13 EMA, first target would be find fib projection second target would be the top of the candle after earning um you know i have mixed feelings on on this one uh you know for me i i think it would be great and i don't know if you're just looking for a short-term swing or a long-term hold on this but i think it would be great to get facebook closer to the 50 day moving average now may not get that opportunity right uh maybe um, on a pullback to the 20 day, right? And this area of support, close this gap, 165, 60 or so. I think that could be a more compelling entry for a longer term hold. And, that, and that's the way I really would be looking at, at Facebook is a long term hold. It's got 2.3 billion shares in the float. Very thick stock, takes a lot to move it. Um, you know, 165, maybe I take a starter in my long-term hold. And then if it were, to, if I were to get so lucky as to have it pull back to 158 and test the 50 day, uh, or test this area of price, potential price support around 156, I'd add to my position and just hold it. But, um, first target would be defined. I mean, look, I, I think it's a swing or a long-term hold. And I think potentially you could get a better entry in Facebook, especially if we see some weakness in the NASDAQ. Now, I'm not suggesting we are. I think we, I mean, I was feeling a little cautious last week. We had a little bit of a bounce. Um, we're at an interesting spot. See if it holds. Um, it's worth keeping an eye on Facebook for sure. Uh, SGMS, another one that was sent in. Now, this sector has been under a little bit of pressure, gaming, right? Uh, MGM's pulled back, wins pulled back a little bit. This had, a, it looks like it was an earnings beat. Um, recent range gets above that. We can see no recent insider activity. Earnings already happened. And I believe this was an earnings pop. Been consolidating, um, looking for 3470 as a potential entry on this one. And I was just looking at 34 bucks, right? 34.10. I'm just, I went back on the weekly. I'm looking at an area that was, that had acted as resistance in the past. Now I'm looking for that to potentially act as support. If I were to take this for a swing or, uh, you know, a longer term hold consideration, I, I really would want to get it as close to 34 bucks as possible. So, um, 34.70 was the entry. I think that's okay. It, you know, if, if you continue to see some weakness, I think 34 bucks is, could be a really good place to, to look and, and get. It is getting oversold. It's been pulling back on lower volume. It does have a good looking setup on the daily. Only 52 million shares in the float, 16% short interest. I mean, it's a definitely one worth watching. Um, but I would want to get this as close to 34 bucks as possible as my entry. Uh, run has earnings on Monday after the close. It's been in consolidation mode for a while here. Uh, had a nice big run. Oh, run had a run. Uh, 68 million shares in the float, 27.83% short interest. Uh, pretty good short interest here on this one, right? And if you back out to the weekly, this, this seven, eight box is a big spot to try and get through. If it can take out $8 with conviction, I think you have a pretty clean looking breakout. Don't chase it, but uh, 
you know, worth keeping an eye on this one for a potential day trading opportunity. MRVL, more of a swing or long-term hold proposition, thick stock, 467 million shares in the float. Not a big short interest. <coughs> Pulling back to the 200 day. This is prime, you know, I mean, this looks like a really good spot to maybe get involved and look for a bounce, right? So it is below the 50 day moving average. Not super crazy about that, but I, I do like the fact that you've got some potential price support in this area. You've got the 200 day, could be an interesting spot for a bounce on MRVL for swing or long-term hold consideration. KMX sent in, uh, Entry 64.50, stop 64.99, or 65.40, I'm sorry, 64.99. First target 67.30, second target 68.70. Probably more of a swing trade, but I like the way it's flagging. Would look for a bounce off the 20 moving average. Uh, stop would be below the round number 65. First target is top of the recent congestion. The second target is top of double top back in January. No recent insider activity earnings are the 22nd of september you know look i mean this, this this is okay my concern is the concern with the auto industry in in general right and um i'm just not sure about this one 184 million shares in the float 14 percent short interest you know i'm just so so on this one peter um uh, I just think there are better looking opportunities out there, better industries out there. But, you know, if you feel good about it, go for it. Just stick to your plan. TRTC. All right, so full disclosure, I own it. <coughs> and they had an investor, little virtual investor uh, conference last week. And they have earnings coming up on the 8th. And what I'm so I own it and um, it is overbought I I get the feeling that they they could crush it but that could also be already priced into the stock if this were you know if this were to pull back these the, let me first say highly speculative highly risky play right it's a penny stock it's a marijuana stock right I mean the feds could come in and shut down this whole industry tomorrow uh, but I think that the risk reward is pretty uh, favorable in, in this. I've met with the CEO of this company. Uh, they have three locations here in Nevada. I think it's an, a really interesting space. It's highly risky. You have to take that into consideration. But report earnings after the, clo after the close on Tuesday. If they report a good number, I think you get a nice big pop out of this. Take out that longer term trend line. Take out the 200 day. Um, if they disappoint, you're going to get a pullback. And, and, and I would be looking, I would welcome the opportunity to be able to get this down in the teens again. Um, but we'll see. We'll see if that happens. But worth keeping an eye on that for a potential day trading opportunity next week. And if you have a higher risk tolerance, then maybe you look until, wait until after earnings to uh, maybe dip your toe. Uh, STX sent in by uh, Peter, and he's looking at a, a potential short on this. Um, 3380 entry, stop 3425. First target 32, second target 3125. Looks like a bear flag off the 8 EMA. Entry is just below the 8 EMA. Stop is above it. First target is the bottom of the recent down breakdown target. Second target support back in 2016. Uh, but I, I, I agree. Looks like a decent decent uh, potential short opportunity. As long as you stick to your trade plan, um, go for it. Depot. They have, so you have the CEO that just bought 15,000 shares. Now that's not an immense amount of shares uh, in June at $9.92, it's $9.47. They've got earnings coming up on the 7th, I think after the close. Now, 
What I find interesting about this chart is it's extremely oversold. It's testing this area of price support. If they happen to beat or surprise or have some kind of positive news, maybe we get a nice pop on this one and back up into that $11, right? So I'm not planning on taking this into the earnings report. I might day trade it if it bounces off of this level. Um, heading, you know, I might day trade it on Monday if you get a good bounce and get some volume. But uh, if it doesn't, I'll wait until after earnings and see if this holds his support. Maybe there will be a day trading opportunity there uh, after they report. All right, that's it. Uh, I'm trying to wrap the, get these things, you know, shorter, but it's still a pretty long video, right? Uh, this is by no means the full list of stocks to watch, and, but um, gives you a good little indication of what we do over at Alpha Wolf Trading. Uh, if you're interested, email me at Tim at Alpha Wolf Trading uh, If you just have questions about a uh, specific stock, email me at Alpha Wolf Trading .com. All right, uh, I'm feeling a little more bullish about the market. We'll see what happens with the retail industry. We'll see what happens with uh, the IBB uh, and with some of these earnings next week. But uh, feeling a little more bullish. I think we'll, we'll we'll see what happens next week. But the markets are actually looking like they could be could be ready for a little bounce. Some of these sectors that have been pulling back. So. Good luck trading next week. Be safe, have fun, and I will see you all next week.